My name is Liz Marshall. I'm a Canadian documentary filmmaker. I directed, produced, and wrote The Ghosts in Our Machine. And it's a film that explores a big question. And the question is, are animals property to be owned and used, or are they conscious beings deserving of rights? And this question is posed through a story. And the story is following Joanne MacArthur, who is a animal rights photojournalist all over the world. And through her photographic lens, the audience meets a cast of animal characters that are hidden from our view otherwise. I feel like I'm a war photographer and I'm photographing history. I'm photographing changes in history right now in terms of animal rights and where it's going. Making a film is uh, an epic endeavor. And you know, it, it's that, that moment of, of commitment when you really go, I am doing this. And you, it becomes um, all consuming. When I first committed myself to um, developing, conceiving um, of the film, I was already a vegetarian and I, you know, absolutely um, identified as an animal lover. But throughout the course of um, making the film and getting it out there and, and connecting with the global animal advocacy movement at large, um, I've really grown a lot as a person. Um, how I view social justice has expanded. Um, my body of work focuses largely on human rights issues and themes and the environment. So The Ghosts in Our Machine is the first animal rights related film that I've ever made. There's absolutely um, an inherent sort of um, social collective resistance to the topic because it's so personal. We're uh, confronted by it every single day. When we become aware of that, it becomes almost staggering. And I remember when I was really delving deeply and, and developing the film, when I became much more aware of that, I almost had a, um, a grief reaction. Um, it, it became so uh, prevalent. Um, and it was almost like my blinders were removed. And it was that awareness that made me realize that, you know, because this is so complex, because there's so much social resistance to it, I wanted the film to also remove people's blinders and not tell people what to do or how to be and how to live, but rather um, if we can remove people's blinders, people can start to see the ghosts around us. And with that awareness, with that consciousness, hopefully there's changes in behavior. You know, in my director's statement, I talk about the cognitive dissonance um, that um, our society and the society at large in the world, um, the conundrum that we face, which is that we love um, our pets, our companion animals. You know, we often give them names and they're, they're members of our family, and we also value wildlife. The, the disconnect is that when it comes to all the billions of other animals, we don't see them. And I think that's a very convenient thing that we don't see them, but it's also just part of our social conditioning. And I think that the movement that is questioning that is getting bigger and louder, and the film is part of that movement. I'm finally getting these thousands of stories that I have down on paper. You're in Toronto, but you spend six months a year mm -hmm. pursuing this issue. Yeah, that's the thing. I have a huge archive, 10 oh, years excellent. worth, of our relationships with animals mm -hmm. around the globe. I think the legacy of the film is that the film has um, reached beyond the choir, beyond the core audience. Um, the core audience, actually I feel like probably we've expanded the core audience. The core audience being animal advocates and most of those animal advocates are vegans. And I feel like the film has been a powerful and is a powerful tool to expand uh, the conversation. Um, because it's an open-ended film, it's not didactic, dogmatic, and it's also a cinematic um, story and experience. So people appreciate its tone um, and they appreciate the filmmaking as well.